Alhamdulillah, it's an honor to be here and it's even a great honor to be in a gathering that is associated with the Quran and Kareem. So no doubt, Master Mr. Kamrul Islam deserves credit Sayyid Farooq Shah Sahib, who has always been at the forefront of helping and assisting and propagating the Deen of Islam through the Quran, through the Sunnah, through the poetry and praise of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillah, today to hear such words of the Quran and Kareem recited from a person who is linked all the way back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the purest form of Quran recitation that we will hear. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala describes the sifa, the characteristics of a mu'min. And he says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِدَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِمَانًا وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتُوَخِلُونَ Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, the mu'minun are those when Qur'an is recited over them, their hearts shudder in awe. And when verses are repeated over them, their Iman increases and upon their Lord they rely. So sat here listening to these verses of the Qur'an and Kareem, no doubt should have an impact upon our hearts and if it did, then Alhamdulillah, the Qur'an gives us blessings and glad tidings that we are from amongst the Mu'minun. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast in gatherings where Qur'an and Kareem is recited. Amen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, alhamdulillah wa fi'l-i'mu yukafi mazida wa salatu wa salam ala khair al-anam wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa azwajihi wa zurriyatihi ajma'in amma ba'd wa qad qala Allah tabarak wa ta'ala بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ألف لام صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا على رسوله الكريم ونحن ولا ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين. Today in the time that I have, I've been asked to speak about some aspects with regards to the virtues of the Quran and Kareem. So I'll start off by making a confession and that is that unfortunately I won't be able to do that because the reality of the Qur'an and Kareem is only known to Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. What we are able to do is mention some glimpses from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam with regards to what is Qur'an. The intention of coming here today is to try and inspire maybe one, two, or a few people that are listening today for them to assess their relationship with the Qur'an and Kareem once again. And this starts with myself. I ask myself and those that are around us here today, since Ramadan, how many of us have picked up the Qur'an and how many of us have recited the Qur'an and Kareem? This is the question that we should really ask ourselves. That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the Qur'an as tibyani kulli shay, that the Qur'an contains everything. In another narration, in another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا رَطْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ That there is not a dry or a moist thing except that it is mentioned in the Qur'an al kareem Which means the solution of all problems is in the Qur'an al kareem but the question is, are we seeking solutions from the Qur'an? These are the most important questions and often the difficult questions that we sometimes not ask. As Muslims, we have the solution with us. It's in front of us. But we tend to avoid asking the Qur'an al kareem for the answers that we're looking for. When the Qur'an al kareem is the eternal speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we were just to reflect upon the word eternal, it means that it is the speech of Allah that has no beginning and a speech that will have no end. And this is something that we need to really reflect upon. When we look at Christianity, over time when it moved away from what Isa alayhi salam bought, and it got altered and changed and tampered. 
and it became a book that consisted of nothing but falsehood, then there was a period where the governments moved away from Christianity and it was called the Enlightenment, Enlightenment period. Because they moved away from what was false and they found themselves now enlightened because they saw reality, they saw light, they saw advancement, they saw technology. They found religion to be something that was holding people back and freeing themselves from that concept that was false. They have now enlightened themselves with something that moved away from their religion into a world of secularism and secular states were created thereafter. What we find in the Muslim Ummah is we have something which is the unchanged speech of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which contains nothing but the truth. In 1400 years, no individual has managed to prove even the slightest of doubt in the Quran al kareem because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already informed us when He said, La rayba fihi, that there is no doubt in it. So how could anyone even find any doubt in the Quran al kareem But yet, we have something that is also known as Nur, which is the Quran, which is the enlightening, the book that is light and that book that enlightens. But yet we choose darkness, we choose trials and tribulations, and then we have to suffer with it. Keeping these things in mind, these are those gatherings that Alhamdulillah, Marana Harun is assembled with the purpose of igniting our love for the Quran Kareem once again and to remind ourselves of our relationship with the Qur'an al kareem and the high station and status of the Qur'an al kareem and what it should be in our lives for us. To understand the majesty of the Qur'an al kareem we have to look at those individuals who are the masters of the Arabic language. When we look at what the Prophets before the Prophet were given, they were given miracles in accordance to the people that were they were living in and amongst and with. Musa Islam was given that great miracle of being able to perform miracles. And we should be careful not to use the word magic because magic is a form of deception of the eyes whereas a karama is something that takes place which is impossible for humans to do that takes place with the will of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa alayhi salam's karama was such that when the magicians saw his miracles taking place, they were bewildered by what had taken place such that they believed in Musa alayhi salam. When Isa alayhi salam was sent, he was sent at a time where illnesses were very rife and prone amongst these people. And homeopath and medicine were known to be that attraction that people were very attracted towards. The most honorable person in that time was the one who had the most medicines or the one who was able to cure others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam equipped with such shifa that he was able to cure every illness. And according to the words of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, he said, I was able to cure everyone even bring the dead back to life with the will and permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except the fool. So even in our ummah today, we're able to produce and give answers to everyone except the fool because he just does not want to understand. When it came to the time of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala wasallam, Arabic language was a cultural rank amongst its people. Those who were embodied with the greatest rhetoric in the Arabic language were those individuals that were the most honorable in that community. Those were the people who sought the greatest ranks were the ones who had memorized the greatest amount of poetry, who then understood the science of poetry, who then wrote poetry. Before the time of the Prophet wasallam, people had memorized hundreds of thousands of proses of poetry. And when they would sit in gatherings, 
they would read poems in order to show their station and their status amongst their community. In the time of the Prophet ﷺ, we find in the books of Sirah there was a man by the name of Nabi, an individual who was a master in poetry. His mastery over the Arabic language was such that in one of the competitions which was organized in the city of Mecca, the competition which was known as Bukash, in it, seven Shu'ara poets were selected. Labid was one of those individuals who were selected for his poetry and his mastery and his command of poetry to such an extent that when he presented his poetry, people prostrated to Labid because how intrigued they were with the language and the usage of the Arabic language that he had. They would prostrate to him for his language and then they wrote it upon silk and they hanged it in the Kaaba al There were seven such individuals. Saba Mu'allaqat, these people were known as the seven poems that were hanged inside the Kaaba al And just as these people were into their poetry and writing poetry, on the other side we had the Prophet wasallam, upon whom was coming revelation. These poetries were being hung in the Kaaba al-Musharrafa and on the Prophet sallallahu came Surah al-Gawthar. Subhanallah. When the Sahaba heard this Surah, one of them wrote it and they went and they hung it by the side of the poems that were written by Labid. When Labid walked past, he saw that another poem has now hung next to his, intrigued as to who this person was. Or what audacity does an individual have to place his poetry next to mine? He went and picked that sheet upon which Surah Qawtha was recited and he recited it. When he recited the poetry, he understood the depth of it. He understood the meanings of it. When Surah Qawtha is the most concise Surah in the Quran and Kareem, it has the most vast explanation of it in comparison to all the other Surahs of the Quran and Kareem. When he read it, he understood the meanings of the words that cannot be translated. And this is why we say there are hundreds of translations of the Quran al kareem yet nothing can do justice to the Arabic language. No one has yet been able to translate the Quran and no one will ever be able to translate the Quran al kareem This is why a translation is not Quran, it's a translation. And these are important things to keep in mind. Because the Qur'an cannot be translated. The richness of the Arabic language is such that it cannot be translated in one language. Any language, be it English or any other language. This is why we have so many people attempting to translate the Qur'an, but they are unable to. When Labid saw the verses of Surah al kawthar he took his poem down and he left the, the, the Surah al kawthar left it in the Kaaba. He started to ask, what is this? And he heard that this is Qur'an being revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. He was even more intrigued to find out more. He started to ask the companions for more verses to the extent that he accepted the deen of Islam by the virtue of the Qur'an. Subhanallah. It's mentioned years later, someone said to Labid, Oh Labid, you were an individual that people prostrated to. People did such that to you because of your poetry. Have you written any more poems? He said, ever since I've been introduced to the Quran and the I have no need of writing any more poetry. Allah. People had no need to write anymore because the Quran and the sufficed for the internal needs as well as the inter intellectual needs of people. This was the impact that the Quran and the had upon people. And we have to ask ourselves that the impact that the Quran has is no doubt. But what we have to ask ourselves, have we given ourselves the chance to be introduced to the Quran so we can also be overwhelmed by the Quran and Kareem? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran and Kareem from amongst the verses of Quran that I recited were Haruf and Muqattaat. The Quran and Kareem can be divided into three different types of ayahs. The ayahs which are Haruf al-Muqatta'at, the ones that I've recited, uh, ayat al 